one were asked to state what he considered to be the dullest season of all the year for villagers and dwellers in the country generally, one would no doubt point to the months of January and February. After the Christmas and New Year festivities, there's a long interval of comparative monotony for the average person. The world settles down to hard work where that is possible, and the minds of all, consciously or unconsciously, are directed towards Easter. There are the longer days coming and the light evenings. Merry as may have been the Christmas holidays, there were inconveniences. With Easter it will be different. Then we have the warm sunshine, budding trees and flowers, and the genial open air. But there is some time to wait before its arrival. This is as it strikes us today. Our forefathers were not nearly as dull as we are in this particular respect. From Christmas to Easter we have no recognised common festival, unless we look upon Shrove Tuesday as a festival which would be stretching the point somewhat. But down to a century ago and even less, there were several customs observed and amusements indulged in which have now become obsolete. Among these are to be reckoned the Twelfth Night celebrations, masking, and afterwards the late wassail, which brings us on towards St. Valentine's Day. Another popular observance, very common in Wiltshire, as it was elsewhere, was that of Plough Monday. The manner of observing the custom differed in various districts and localities. In some quarters the practice of drawing the plough in procession through the village survived well into the last century. In other places the procession had lapsed, and all that remained was the curious custom of chasing the cock and the ploughman's feast in the farm kitchen. Of this I gleaned abundant evidence round about the Wiltshire Downs and the Cotswold Hills from farm labourers, carters and ploughmen before the war. Now, since the older race of inhabitants has practically died out, it would not be so easy to obtain particulars from the lips of living witnesses. Plough Monday was the first Monday after the twelfth day. It would seem to have received that name from the fact that, on that day, for the first time since Christmas, farmers and husbandmen resumed the ploughing of arables. This is one explanation. From very early times there was a kind of close season in ploughing. This can be traced to the east where, for several weeks at the end of the year, it was considered impious to put the plough into the soil. The earth mother at that time was thought to be sleeping, and I've read furthermore in reference to this subject that the earth was considered to be unclean at this season which is evident from the admonition, sow not your barley when the clods unclean, i.e. within the restricted season, as aforesaid. The order of the procession and the games, which, on Plough Monday, were once as universally observed as the May Day feasts and the harvest home, were as follows. A dozen or twenty men of the farms, ploughmen and carters, provided themselves with long ropes. They donned white linen, homespun shirts for the occasion, and if the weather was unfavourable, they wore waistcoats beneath them to protect them from the cold. To their arms and shoulders they affixed gay-coloured ribbons and smartened up their hats in the same way, as did the wassailers and mummers. Beginning in the morning about ten o'clock, they drew the plough all round the village to the farmhouses, beginning with the lord of the manor and coming down to tradesmen and innkeepers who, we may be sure, benefited most finally from the collections made. Conspicuous in the company was an old woman, or a youth dressed up in female's clothes to personate one. 
She wore much cheap finery and gaudy clothes with skirts dragging on the ground, and she was called Old Bessie. It's not clear what this signified. She was not the clown because usually there was a fool specially provided. Indeed, in the most of our old village sports, a fool or clown was considered necessary to finish off the piece. The fool in this case wore the skin of a horse, with long tail hanging down and the jaws intact, and every now and then he whisked the tail and snapped the jaws to fried amusement for the spectators and followers. He also carried the box for the collection, which, of course, was as important, if not the principal feature, of the procession. The money so obtained was usually spent the same night at one or other of the inns, where a repast was provided, the most of which appears to have been drinkables. At the same time there was much mirth and merriment, including songs and dances, and it was the custom in Wiltshire and South Gloucestershire to sing the folk song entitled The Faithful Plough, a version of which is given in my Folk Songs of the Upper Thames. Come all you jolly ploughmen of courage stout and bold That laboured all the winter through the stormy winds and cold To clothe your fields with plenty and your farmyards to renew that bread may not be wanted, we must use the faithful plough. There were other features of the observance besides the procession, but they were not the same in every village or district. In some cases the chief ploughman appeared at the door of the farm kitchen early in the morning and challenged the maid. It was rarely a question of who was the earliest to stir. If the ploughman could take his whip, plough-staff, paddle or a hatchet and place them on the hearth in the kitchen before the servant girl could have her fire lit and her kettle on, he'd won the contest. In such a case the servant maid was bound to hand over a cockerel to the ploughman on or before Shrove Tuesday. In other places where the teams went into the fields to work as usual on that day, the challenge to the maid or to the mistress was made in the evening. Then the ploughman, after stabling his horses, with a whip in his hand, went to the door of the kitchen, and if he could cry, Cock in pot! before the maid could cry, Cock on dunghill! the prize was his, and the cockerel had to be paid, as before said. Following this, the whole of the ploughmen and boys came in from the farmyard, and the farmer gave them a good supper with plenty of strong ale. In Wiltshire, down to a time comparatively recent, we had the midday meal, but the procession had been discontinued some years earlier. At the same time, I knew an old man at Blunsdon near Swindon, 98 years of age, and he'd heard the mummer's play used on Plough Monday. There they had the horses hide with the head and jaw, and at the conclusion they sang the folk song Poor Old Horse, also in my collection. In Wiltshire, the teams would appear to have gone out in the morning as usual, and to have stayed in the fields till noon. At twelve the men left the fallow, brought their horses and put them in the stable. Then the head ploughman, carrying the plough spanner and a wooden wedge in his hand, and followed by the under ploughman and boys, proceeded to the kitchen and laid them on the table before the mistress with the remark, Now for the old cock, missus, or rain or shine, the cock's mine. After that, the ploughman and his mates went outside and chased the cock round the farmyard for ten or fifteen minutes and then returned to the kitchen and sat down to a substantial meal. There was no more ploughing that day. The afternoon was spent in the stables, cleaning the harness. <laughs> ¶¶